So All next. right, we're going to bring on uh, Jeremy Burton here. We're live at EMC World, the new CMO, not so new anymore. Um, this is his second EMC World. We had him on last year. And he's a face melter in his own He's, he's Mr. Face Melter. <laughs> Jeremy, good to see you. All right, good to see you. Thanks for coming on. All right, okay. Chad left his bobblehead. That's good. We got the echo <laughs> behind us in the, the pavilion. Free gift. The Chad no, bobblehead. No, he, he meant to take it. He said, you got to go. I'll, I'll, I'll give it up. <laughs> I'll go and get okay. my own to the session. All right, so, we're on the air now with Jeremy Burton, the chief. It's good. So, Jeremy, welcome back to theCUBE. Uh, we had you on last year, your first EMC World. You had been here for just a couple of weeks. Didn't have time to... Th th thanks to, for inviting me back. <laughs> well, <laughs> anytime. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, so we were at the mega launch. We had you on there as well. And uh, you weren't kidding. You said that, uh, yeah, well, we're a $20 billion company. we got to start acting like one from a marketing standpoint. And you're doing that. <laughs> yeah, we, we got a lot to say. Yeah, I'll say. <laughs> so... Uh, so yeah, we saw we saw some records breaking. We saw, we heard new records today. We were watching online. We saw that uh, you set a new record with uh, the most people in a hallway or something, uh, uh, <laughs> something yeah. like that. Yeah, <laughs> no, we, it's what's been that all about? <laughs> the most people in the hallway. What was that? It was uh, ten thousand people in the in the in the. It was in a the tweet hallway. that went out. Somebody tweeted. EMC's up. breaking record breakers. Ten thousand people uh, in the hallway. I, I know. We, we maybe we opened the keynote doors late, and we go, probably right, had right, people back. I think up. it might have been <laughs> some people tweeting about the new record that might not have been intentional. Yeah. No. Uh, it's good. There's a lot of people here this week. We get yeah. them out. We need to get them out the hallway and into the keynote room, though. Yeah. Well, there are a lot of people in there today. So. So uh, you had a good year this year. Um, you talked about um, marketing last year at EMC World, our first cube. Event, so we've actually feel kindred spirits with you because you were new to EMC. The cube was launched for the first time here one year later, and three million views. We've kind of grown, watched you work, and you were on the cube last year and said, "Yeah, we're going to up our game, and we're going to have some fun. We're going to be uh, consumerization like a consumer company. Why should they have all the fun?" Uh, I think you've done some cool things. You had some big. Flashy events, the mega launch. You yeah. had a motorcycle guy jumping over systems. You had Boba. a big tape ball, record Mini Cooper. I mean, good, good job. I mean, I think very impressive year for yeah, you. We, we, we've, had a, we've had a fun year. Um, the, the key thing to all of this, though, is the, the message. We, we want to make the message simple. We want to make it stick. And, uh, and we want to make it memorable. And one of the ways I think you make the message memorable is the Mini Cooper, the record breakers, the uh, you know, Bubba Blackwell who's, who's here. Um, but you know, I hope what folks walk away with is, um, hey, that was a record breaking launch, right? That, that was really the goal of the mega launch. And I think, we, I think it was mission accomplished. And you know, EMC world, we've, we're, we're more kind of up here, strategy, cloud meets big data, but I defy anyone to uh, ignore what the message is this week or try and avoid it. You just, you can't. You said, yeah, well, you're, you said you're into messaging, and I think you did a good job. Uh, we've talked to Joe Tucci, all the senior executives over the year. They're all impressed with you. You've done a good job. And the whole management team at EMC is really open-minded, and they're, they're really thinking differently. They're thinking bigger. They're really thinking about market share. They're mm -hmm. thinking about the transformation of the brand. Uh, Pat Gelsinger last night spent an hour with us here in theCUBE, and he talked about things as, as he had that 20 mile stare in the marketplace and, and he was thinking, hey, you know, hey, big data, Hadoop, it's not about what's going on now, it's about what we're going to do. And that's about a transformation of the brand. So how are you going to be able to keep up with that? Are you going to keep running hard? Is there a strategy? How, do you, how are you thinking about that? Share with yeah. us your, your views. Yeah, so maybe I, I, have, I have maybe a slightly different view because I don't view, a, you know, kind of marketing keeping up with the strategy. I view the strategy uh. keeping up with the marketing. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. But uh, no, I mean, look, I, I think what we tried to do is eliminate a lot of the noise. Uh, you know, tell folks, look, we're about cloud. And then once you've built this cloud platform, what are you going to do with it? Big, big data comes next. And I think it's probably fair to say that we are, you, you are seeing probably the tip of the iceberg as to what uh, we can do with, with big data. And so I, I feel like we've got to build out that story for quite some time. And you know, we, we tend to forget this. I mean, certainly in marketing and marketing people in general, have, every marketer has got a mild case of ADD, right? Some of them have a major case. And you know, we, 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 we tend to um, get bored of messages too quickly. And, and our, our job here is to sustain. So I, I kind of feel like to, to keep up, we, we've just uh, got to 
be belligerent about reinforcing the message and repeating the message until we're convinced that everybody we need to reach, we actually have reached. And um, so th th this cloud versus uh, big data or, or meets big data, um, kind of get used to it because uh, you're going to see it a lot more in future. Well, you know, the line, it's not my line, but it's a good one, is, is big data that gives the cloud something to do. And, uh, and <laughs> it's so, a good line. Yeah. So it is, and, and and you know, you talk about marketing leading the message. You could have had EMC World Cloud meets big data with just Green Plum and just Isilon, but you, right. it's, it's got to make your job easier when there's actually some more meat in the bone. You guys jumped in, two feet, arms, you know, yeah. you know cloud ablazing with uh, with the Hadoop announcement. So that's got to help your 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 credibility. Yeah, Hadoop was a good call. I think I think I saw some press coverage um, uh, earlier today around. Hey, how could you have a theme of big data and not talk about Hadoop? I mean, yeah, spot on. I mean, you can't. Hadoop is it's fundamental to the analysis of, of unstructured data. And I, I think with the Greenplum acquisition, we, we got our feet wet in, in the world of data or data management. Uh, Hadoop, we felt, was just a very, very necessary uh, next step. And, uh, you know, the, the statistics are to be believed, that's going to be the thick end of the wedge in terms of uh, data analysis over the next decade. And I think EMC can bring a lot to the party there. So how do you, you talked about reaching more people, your, your, your brand is changing, your marketing is changing, and how do you, how do you scale that? How do you go about and do that? Yeah, I, I, think, I think we've got to acknowledge that there are, there are new roles uh, developing inside the, the business, not, not, not just IT, but inside the business. And you know, last year we really talked about cloud architects. Um, th this year we are really zeroing in on uh, data scientists. Um, people who are not really maybe experts in the database, but are experts in understanding the semantics of the data. And, and that for me is uh, an emerging role, but as information becomes much more kind of fundamental and important to the business, these people become invaluable. And, uh, and so to, to me, one of the ways we can scale our message is we need an advocate inside every big organization. That advocate for EMC is probably not the DBA it's probably going to be one of these newer roles, the cloud architect, the data scientist, and I've got a couple of others up my sleave as well. That, uh, well, we, you know, we see that in our <laughs> business. About later. You know, we, we use data science and data scientists. Yeah. We, there are a version of data scientists to basically gather the data so we can reach more people. Yeah. Do you see, I mean, are you hiring data scientists in your marketing team? Yeah, well, so we don't have them in the marketing team, uh, but we, we have a number of data scientists uh, in our data computing division. And the, the, these guys are very, very interesting because, um, I don't know whether you've met over the years, I've, I've met a lot of engineers, and, and it's, it's interesting how often uh, people who are good at programming are also good at piano, okay. right? So it's kind of like capitalism and communism, and at an extreme, they're very close. And, <laughs> and I think the same is true of kind of math and art. At an extreme, yeah, they're very, very close. And so these data scientists, uh, they tend to want to be uh, very, very good at the analysis, but also the visualization of the data. And so I think every major organization is going to end up with uh, multiple data scientists. And the companies where, where data is their business, you know, the LinkedIn, they've already got hundreds of these guys on staff. Yeah, I mean, a big, a big part of, I mean, obviously marketing has to serve sales and drive, yeah. drive new business, but a big part of the whole data scientist push that, in my opinion, I wonder if you could comment on this, is that you guys have to, if you're going to go into the Hadoop world, that's a whole, that's a, that's a brand new market for you guys. It's the Wild yeah. West, and you've got to attract these types of of data scientists, and a lot of that's marketing. Marketing the company, marketing the brand. Yeah, I mean, open source is a very different way of going about it, and you know, you've know, you got to establish credibility in the community, and the way you do that is you contribute. You embrace the community and you contribute. And I think certainly with the Greenplum team, that's a path that they've they've trodden in the, pa in the past, and I think you know, the marketing team can learn a lot from the way the, the startup, the Greenplum team, have gone about it. The da data scientists, I feel, are you know, somewhat related. I, I feel we've got to get into the academic institutions. I, I, I think this is something that is uh, almost part of curriculum. Um, I think it is something that um, the academia will embrace big time. And I, I believe in 10 or 15 years time, I mean, I, I just wonder how many kind of pure engineering degrees you're going to have. As infrastructure becomes less important and data becomes more important, the engineering of the data, I think, is what these uh, the, the, the forward-looking colleges are going to be after, and that, that is a great way to scale our message, and it's a, it's a new marketing tactic, but uh, I think it's one that we've got to exploit. How about some of the tactical um, things that you're doing? Obviously, Greg Goss was on, your uh, wingman, creative director, yep. and you've got another 
uh, old reacquaintance yeah. on board, Jonathan, yeah. um, corporate marketing head you just hired. So you got that brain trust together, Jeremy. So so you guys are playing around with some new new channels, obviously working with the Cube with us, allowing us to do our independent uh, thing. You have EMC TV going on really strong, very complimentary to what we're doing. You got viral videos, you're in the social channels. Got the iPad application. iPad application, so you're not afraid to experiment. Um, what have you found that's working? And, you know, again, we talked about this yeah. last year, Silicon Valley, Pat Gelsinger talked about innovation yeah. and failures, okay. What have you found that's kind of worked, not worked, and what have you doubled down on? I, I think, the, and this may sound almost like a cliche, but the, the, the social media thing has really worked for us. Um, the, the, the mega launch, it, it's, it's really the first time that I've really done a um, kind of full-on social media campaign and, and the, um, the results were spectacular uh, because you know, the physical event, if you like, it, 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 you do the physical event and you think that that's the big thing and it really isn't. The big thing is the online world. And we were able to kind of tease people through social media. We were then able to bring that social media noise and, and buzz uh, to the actual online event and drive over you know, 50,000 views on the day of the, of the highlight reel. And yeah. That for me, I mean, that is working and we don't do enough of it. And, and look, It's the, early. It is early. I mean, the, the Mini Cooper video, the, the, I mean, the re, you know, putting 26 people in a Mini Cooper sounds like a, a dumb idea and hey, maybe it was, but man. It's great. That's no, getting a huge play it. on we, YouTube. We, we ran yeah, we that. half a million views. Yeah. No. Well, we ran that with the, uh, we did a flash cube during the big data conference that GigaOM ran out of our studio and we ran footage from the mega launch as bio breaks for us, and the audience stayed with there. With five minute highlights of yeah. Joe Tucci, we had because we had Bubba B -roll, Blackwell, basically. Bubba Blackwell, uh, uh, yeah. Patel. We had we we had probably two hundred thousand views of yeah. the Flash Cube. Yeah, it was amazing. We got I over mean, two hundred thousand. You're you're kind of I don't want to say gimmicky, but you're kind of Flash became great B-roll for yeah, us, people but your branding's it. all over yeah. it, yeah. and the audience was consuming it. So it's like, <laughs> I guess it's a five minute commercial. Yeah, well this I is mean, where the risk comes in, right? I mean, <laughs> okay. I, I do encourage the team to take risks, and we're going to get it wrong sometime on the video, and we're going to get it wrong in the world of social media, and the thing is, you've got to not crucify the team, right? Because it, it's about getting it right nine times, not getting it wrong once. And uh, I, I really feel like um, I'm, I'm starting to see from the marketing team the kind of creativity and innovation because they've got the license to make a mistake, not because, you know, I always, I mean, I, I want them to do great stuff, but if they make a mistake, yeah. that's okay. Is that, uh, I mean, that's got to be a, a culture shift for a lot of the traditional EMC. We talked to Pat last night yeah. about, you know, what EMC, East Coast, West Coast company, it's really a yeah. blend now, but uh, so so you, are you seeing that on the East Coast version as well, or is this more the, yeah. the cowboys out in your land, you're in John? Uh, you yeah, I mean, you know. Cowboys <laughs> out in our land, come on. I, I think that's every, true. every major tech company's got a headquarters, but I, I would argue no major tech company is, is really um, headquartered in one single place. Everything is global. Mm. And, and, and really, if I look at the, the guys that we're competing against, it's the biggest of the big, and so we've got to make ourselves heard. And so if you like that, that risk taking, it, you know, it's competitive advantage because I think we, we do have a management team that allows me to take risk. And uh, as long as that's the case, then I, I think we, we probably have a leg up on some of our competi yeah, competition. One of, the, one of the things that I've been impressed with is that you guys are coordinating. So I guess maybe the budget may be a little bit bigger. I'm not sure what the yeah. numbers are because you guys don't tell us what the numbers are. <laughs> but it seems you're spending some money. You said last we year. We spend the most with Wikibon and uh, Silicon <laughs> Angle. I, mean, I can <laughs> no, tell you that. <laughs> I don't know where that's going. Uh, but uh, no, seriously, though, but you, you said last year you're going to spend. But it's, you got your messaging. Yeah. And in the world of, of social media you're talking about, these are new access to your customers. I mean, Greg Gotts was talking to me about, you know, the, the vision around, hey, you know, your customers are normal people too. They're they're watching movies. They're probably right. doing stuff on Netflix and you know, their kids are on YouTube. They're going to grow up to be, you know, getting stuff, news on Facebook and YouTube and all that stuff. So you, as a competitive advantage, can reach your customers in a new way. Yeah, and Yeah, it, well, the, the interesting thing about it, and, it, and it's kind of, I think, difficult for marketeers to accept this, um, because the world of social media, it, it, it is absolutely permission-based. Unless you can get um, a customer to fan you or, or friend you or acknowledge that you are a person that they want to communicate with, then you don't get the right to talk. And so it's a very different model to email. Um, you, you know, As much as most emails should be permission-based, our inboxes will testify that it really isn't at times. But the world of social media is. And, and you've got to deliver, first and foremost, high-quality content before you get permission. 
and and that's that that to me is kind of key why fo- folks like Greg and Jonathan and a lot of the creative folks in the team become important because they can generate the content that is interesting that will drive people yeah. to want to talk to EMC. And then once you get them, you got the, the the consumer has to know that that he or she trusts you. Yeah. Right. Because you know we talk about security a lot. But the other side of the coin is privacy, right? So when you're getting this permission-based marketing, you're talking about big data, there's yeah. incentives to give up some of your private information, yeah. but I got to know that, that it can be protected. Yeah, uh, and, it, and, I, and I think that the, the better the content, uh, the more willing people are to, willing to give up personal information and details. If I say, look, you can have a free Symmetrics array if, um, if you give me your, all of your personal details and the, name, and the names of your kids, they'll be like, sure, you know. Um, but, you know, and this is what I actually like about the world of social media is it, it forces the marketeers to be content rich. If you're content rich, you'll get the right to market. And if you're not, I mean, you're out the game. You know, but what's interesting is, is that, you know, you guys have your message of cloud and big data. Yeah. And, you know, the pressure will be on you from a marketing standpoint to use big data as you're mentioning, you have access to your customers who are connected, who are measurable now. They're not this black box, you know, voodoo. 50% of the time, you don't know who you're talking to. You can actually, they talk back at you now, yeah. and that's measurable. So this lifestyle angle you have with your programming and the brand resonates. I think that is a very cool thing. Even the, you know, the Bubba Blackwell and the Mini Cooper and the things you're doing, it's lifestyle. Yeah, you're putting a human face on AMC. It's um, it's real. I mean, it's 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 not trying to be super. It's not trying over trying to be cool. Yeah, it's just being lifestyle. And I think that is uh, the social media formula. You tie in events. You tie in face to face communications. And uh, <laughs> well, I mean, the, the you know, social media, right? I mean, I, I, you know, I, I look at this as you know, it's challenging the establishment. You know, uh, you, you know, bloggers hate press releases, right? Because it comes from the establishment. Bloggers probably hate corporate websites because it, it is the polished voice of the corporation. And and the thing is, is you, you can ignore that kind of at your peril because yeah. it is what it is. And so you got to play the game the way the world now is. And yeah. that means being you know less uptight about certain yeah. things and taking a few more risks. And I think if you do that, then well, we've had com- we've had conversations about the you know our business. We've, yeah. we've met with you a couple of times and talked in depth. Um, and you know we love you. You get what we do, and we love that. Um, and, but I want to get your opinion on the of media because one of the things that we're studying, Dave and I, is the big data role in our business um, and looking at the existing franchise, like the New York Times, like the Wall Street Journal, like the trade magazines, like yeah. uh, the print magazines and even TV. I mean, you've, you've seen that world, you've played in that yeah. world. The world is changing like the cloud, big data business. Yeah. People are online, online's the new TV. We're seeing YouTube today at Google I.O. Yep. talking about amplifying their video operations. What is that going to do for the ad business? I mean, it's still uh, a huge number. Yeah, the, these media companies. Go, the ad business is going to Google <laughs> <laughs> and and Facebook and you know the, the the new online media, if you like. Why? Because these guys have got better information, better targeting. I mean, you think about the old world of targeting ads. I mean, there was no data. You kind of guessed. You had this shotgun and you'd go blasting things and hope you hit. The new guys have got data that can target. And what I think is that a lot of these guys who today are maybe working for maybe traditional media, um, I actually think that corporations like EMC could benefit a lot from some of the writing talent and capability that they have. Because if you you think back to what I said a second ago, content is king. There is a lot of great uh, writing talent uh, in, in these traditional publications and I would like a lot of them to tell the EMC story and deliver the EMC story in a rich way to people so that they can understand it. And, and, and I think you're starting to see that. I mean, I see many of the old journalists that I used to brief back in the day, they work at Salesforce.com or they're at IBM, and they're commentating on what's going on inside Salesforce or inside IBM or they're writing company blogs. Why? Be, because we're hiring writes. journalists, right? Yeah. They're out there and they're good, yeah. and they can tell a story, and, and Well, right our now, business model is a little bit different. We can actually afford to hire journalists the way we do our programming, but you know, I just noticed a CNET reporter just went to Google, so yeah. that the notion of curation and content, original content, is a big deal, and, and you know, there's that balance of that authenticity, right? And you know, independent and, and vendor specific, but yeah. it's blurring. And and so social media is great for us because we can do our thing yeah. as an independent, organic content, but yeah. collaborate with you guys, and it's been so successful. Yeah, I think I think, I think for traditional media, look, I, most of the print advertising it ain't coming back, right? <laughs> with, with very few exceptions. But I think maybe the iPad or, or tablet devices represent some kind of um, oasis in the middle of the desert for a lot of these guys. Right. 
But even the iPad advertising model has not been figured out yet. We, I mean, we've done a bunch of work with the FT and with the Wall Street Journal, and, it, and it's getting there. But I think we're still probably a couple of way, years away from like very good, high quality, you know, targeted advertising in the iPad, which. You know, I think I think most of the traditional print advertising will move to that medium, but most of the rest, targeted search yeah. advertising, that, that ain't coming back. But that's the content I mean. model on well, the we spent, is very right. you know, that's We spend yeah, tons of time on this, and, and my, my opinion is that the data is the key. I think the big data message is clear, and the things that we're doing with Trend Connect, our service that, that we're doing, really is about a user experience, and I think at the end of the day, whoever can crack the code on organic programming and get a, a user base, the advertisers will figure it out how to vector into that. So, so yeah. I like what we're doing, uh, Dave. I think that's compelling, and we don't have that baggage of like an institutional media company. So, so the challenge I see for the print guys is they love the tablet because it's a subscription. They can say we got someone downloaded, and it's the new new the, newspaper. The right? interruption, mm -hmm. the interruptive ad. Mm, I don't. I'm not bullish on that. Um, that's just my opinion, my opinion. But so, Jeremy, how do you top this? I mean, you have to, right? I mean, <laughs> we haven't got going yet. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I well, believe well, him when he well, says was that. Ronald people, Reagan's right? line: "You ain't seen nothing yet." <laughs> yeah. this, this, uh, this show, I think, can just can only get bigger. Yeah. Yeah. And what is interesting, I know a lot of folks don't think about it this way, but it's it's worth thinking about it this way. If you add up VMworld, RSA conference, and EMC World. It's up there with Oracle Open World. I mean, Open World probably gets about 50,000 people. We had 17,000 at VM World. We had about another 18 at RSA. You've got about 10 at EMC World. Uh, so, so I think you know, for EMC as a whole, um, these conferences become a, a key way to get a message to um, not just the install base, but you know, people who don't really know what EMC stands for. And we also, you know, through RSA and through uh, VMworld, uh, get another bite of the cherry. So. Yeah, and those are great, great events. Mm -hmm. um, open, great vibe at those events. I mean, and, and this event is changing. There's still the root, the technology roots, but yeah. I definitely feel more of a business flair. VMworld, very open. Yeah. Well, we did open world. We had the cube at open world last year. We, we, we called it Oracle Closed World. I mean, it was, it was just they didn't, not yeah. seeing. We vibe, snuck in. You know? We basically snuck I, in. Uh, I would love to in. do something pretty yeah. radical around big data. <laughs> I mean, I mean, we, we we were holding the data scientist uh, summit yeah. here this week, and we had the registration up for three weeks. Four or five hundred people registered in three weeks. So so yeah. the interest level is there, and I, I think that interest it's level good is marketing. only going to get bigger. The data oh, yeah. science thing is good marketing. Yeah. Why 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 wouldn't we have an industry meeting around? Big data, our, our shared two, practices. Our three biggest days were Hadoop World yep. uh, and two, two days Strata. at Strata. Yeah. Yep. Well over a million views on those three days, well over. I mean, yeah, and yeah. there's a great organic community. And you've got the developers, because you've got the science side of it, and you've got tech. Yep. There's real innovation there, and there's real science involved. So this is not about just slapping a cloud up and some Ruby on Rails coding um, app. It's real deal. I mean, this is scale, it's math. It's real tech. Yeah, and I'd love to do it as not a vendor fest, right? I, th I think, again, content is king. If you yep. want to get the right kind of people there, lead with the content, lead with the discussion. And, and I'm a big believer, the more that we can help share best practices around big data, particularly analytics, all, all the boats rise, right? If people get better at analyzing data, everybody becomes smarter. And I, I'd love to get some kind of forum together along those lines. So last year you said a lot of things on theCUBE. Um, and they worked out. You hit your milestones. You're uh, on your evaluation. Check, check, check. You did <laughs> on our on our notes. We went back at the clips, which we'll run a few. Wait, after what did they say? The stock price was going to be uh, out there. No, no. We uh, said it was a hundred billion dollar market cap. Uh, I think we called. Well, that, we called that by 2014, uh, 2015. I called, we also said that at the beginning of 2011, we said that the core value of EMC dropped. You know, we did that analysis. Said it's crazy. Yeah. Now, right after that, the the stock has done very nicely yeah, yeah. and the core value. I don't know if it was my blog, but. You know. <laughs> so, and Pat Gelsing, we had clips from Pat. He said, it was very clear everyone had objectives, you hit them. So this year, what is uh, your plans for this year on the roadmap and what are the things you want to nail down? Yeah, I, I think we got to solidify the, the big data story. Um, it, it is a new world with things like Hadoop. Um, we've got to you know, be a player in that community, no, no, number one. Um, number two, there's, there's a pretty interesting application story developing. You know, VMware's got a big chunk of that. Paul Moritz talked about that this morning. But there's some uh, kind of gems inside EMC that I think we've got to polish and, and dust down. And I, I really feel, um, you know, if, if Cloud Architect was last year and Data Scientist was this year, we, we think there's a pretty good pitch around the new developer. 
and I would love, I mean, it's been a big passion of mine. Uh, the which created, developer? The new yeah. developer. And I'll leave it at that for now, but it's been a big passion of mine because... DevOps. The, I mean, some interesting <laughs> stuff going on there. Well, I mean, I, I, I built Oracle's development community back, you know, starting back in 99, and, and that, that's a, it's, it's a passion of mine. And we've got a couple of nuggets in the MC portfolio that I don't think we've really done ourselves justice with, put it that way. Yeah, oh, good. So, That's interesting. It has a ton of leverage there. Yeah. And uh, well, over time, you're going to see EMC. You know, infrastructure is certainly a big part of our business, but data and applications will become an increasing part of our business over time. Well, yeah. there's the belief that as uh, open source software commoditizes traditional software, data becomes the new source of competitive advantage in the business. We believe that. Right. It looks like you know you guys <laughs> buy into that at least to a certain extent. So. Uh, yeah. So yeah, this is a very exciting time. And, Jeremy, uh, thank you for your time on theCUBE. We really right. appreciate your support. You've been great to work with. Your team is visionary, and uh, they're executing, they're experimenting and succeeding. So we really appreciate, uh, and congratulations on a great event. Thanks, and uh, hopefully see you guys back here. Same All time, right. same place. All right, Excellent. good All deal. Right. All right, thanks. Jeremy Burton, the Chief Marketing thank Officer, uh, building out a great organization in uh, EMC.